Now recently I've been reading the book Gulliver's Travels and in part one of this book uh, the main character or Lemuel Gulliver uh, travels to a small island nation of Lilliput. The Lilliputians, uh, the people that live on Lilliput, are, are unique in that they are only six inches tall. Now eventually our friend Gulliver befriends them and even performs favors for their government like uh, taking out the, their rival nation's uh, entire fleet of naval ships. But when Gulliver first arrived here to the island nation of Lilliput, uh, the Lilliputians weren't quite, they didn't quite know what to do with him. They had trouble moving him around. Uh, they couldn't really lift him up or down. However, if the Lilliputians knew about hydraulics and Pascal's principle, uh, their work would have been much easier dealing with their friend Gulliver. So today I want to ask the question, how big of a hydraulic lift is needed for one Lilliputian to lift up one Gulliver? But first we need to understand this thing called Pascal's Principle. Pascal, uh, a French physicist and a mathematician, among other things, lived in the early 1600s. He discovered that if you have a container filled with some sort of incompressible fluid, and you press on one end, you apply a force on one end uh, over this area here, F1, a1, then that's going, to, uh, that's going to introduce a pressure into this container. And what Pascal's principle says is that that pressure over here, we'll call it P1, is going to be distributed evenly throughout the fluid and all of the surfaces of the container. So that means that the pressure here is P1, the pressure here is P, and the pressure over here is also going to be P. We'll call it P2, even though P1 and P2 are the same. So if you press on one side of it over here, it's going to create pressure in the container, and that pressure is going to be felt everywhere in the container. Mathematically speaking, uh, we can just write this as the pressure 1 over here is equal to pressure 2. Pressure 1 is equal to pressure 2. Just for simplification, uh, we'll put a force in over here, and there's a plunger on this side too that can also move. So if we apply a force in over here, uh, this one is going to have a force out on the other side. And of course, this we can call area two, uh, if this is area one over there. Okay, so let's plug in our equation for pressure that we learned yesterday. So the pressure over here is going to be a result of F1 over a1, so the force by area, okay, and that's going to be the same. That's going to equal force two divided by area two. So let's say that uh, we are over on this side, and we are pushing on this plunger, and we want to figure out uh, what are the differences in forces uh, that we put in over here and what comes out of the other side. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation for F1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by A1. These are going to cancel. Uh, I'm going to do a little rearranging. I'm going to rewrite it down here. And we're going to get F1 is equal. We're going to get the ratio of the areas. So we have an A1 divided by A2 times and F2. So the force that we apply, the force that we put in our F1, is going to be some ratio, some decimal, either greater than one or less than one, uh, of the force that's put out. Let's, let's, let's attach some numbers to these and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense. Let's just say up in, up in this case we see that uh, A1 is equal to A2. Let's just say that uh, the areas of those, this area, is, let's just say it's 5 centimeters squared. So if A1 is equal to A2, then we're going to get F1 is equal to 5 over 5 of F2 
If we simplify that out, we just get F1 is equal to F2. So if this area is the same as this area, then the force that we put in is going to be the same exact force that's going to be put out on the other side. Play with these areas a little bit and see what happens. So now let's say, let's say that A1, the side that we're pushing on, has an area of 5 centimeters squared. And let's say A2 has an area, oh, I don't know, let's say 2 centimeters squared. So again, if we plug it into our equation over here, we're going to get 1 is equal to, well, we have A1 over A2, so we get 5 over 2 times F2. If we put that into a decimal, we see that we get F1 is equal to a whole 2.5 F2. Well, what, is, what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, let's, let's draw a picture of what this situation would look like. We would have uh, a very large area that we would be pushing on, and eventually that would come down into a very small, a very small area on the other side. So if we're over here pushing... <coughs> This is telling us that F1, over here, the force that we're applying, is going to be 2.5 times the amount of F2, or the force that's put out. That means that if we're pushing on the big end here, we are going to be sweating. Uh, we're going to be working very, very hard. We have to apply a very large force uh, just so that the force over here is small. So again, F1, the force that we're putting in, is going to be 2.5 times, it's going to be have to be 2.5 times greater than force 2. Well now let's look at the opposite case. Let's look at the opposite case where uh, we are fortunate enough to be pushing on the smaller end. And we have a bigger area on the other side. We have a bigger area on the other side over here. So let's just swap these numbers around. Let's say a1 is equal to 2 centimeters squared, and A2 is equal to 5 centimeters squared. Well, if we plug that into our equation, we're going to get F1 is equal to 2 fifths of F2, or a fraction of it. If we put that into a decimal just to make it easy. F1 is going to equal 0 0.4 of F2. So now the force that we're putting in over here is only going to be a fraction of what's being put out over here. So this force that's being put out over here is enormous, whereas this force that we have to apply over here is very, very small and minute. So, if we uh, are a Lilliputian and we want to lift Gulliver up on a hydraulic lift, we most definitely want to be pushing on uh, the end with the smaller uh, surface area. This is really interesting because just changing, just changing the, the areas, just changing the areas from even to one being really small and one being really big can allow us to manipulate the forces uh, that we're putting in and the forces that we're getting out. So let's redesign our hydraulic here um, uh, to, to kind of work for us. Okay, so all that I've done now is I've introduced a bend into our uh, hydraulic system here. Uh, so again, we have plungers on either end, so these can move uh, up and down and displace each other, just like up here, uh, pushing one, push the other one out. Over here, uh, pushing one down will push the other one up. So, like I said earlier, if we were the Lilliputian, uh, we would want to be standing over here, on the small one. Um, Lilliputians are six inches tall uh, and in centimeter, or sorry, in meters that's about 0 0.15 meters. Um, Gulliver, on the other hand, Gulliver, on the other hand, uh, he has a height of about uh, 1.8 meters and a mass of, we'll say, 75 kilograms. Uh, essentially, if we just scale, uh, if we take the ratio of this and we apply it to this, that means the Lilliputians have a mass of about 6 kg.
kilograms. We want to find we want to find how big this side, how big this area has to be, such that uh, when the Lilliputian stands on it over here, we'll say that this has an area of let's just say five. Uh, square centimeters. That's pretty reasonable. Now uh, that's a circle uh, about that big. Um, here's a Pokemon card for comparison. Uh, so it would actually be that big. Um, so we want to figure out how big this surface area has to be such that when the Lilliputian stands on it, uh, the force up, the force up here, uh, will cancel out Gulliver's weight. So essentially it's like a, a hydraulic Balance. Uh, what? How big does this have to be such that the Lilliputian and Gulliver, Gulliver will balance each other out? Well, we can use our equation up here. Remember that the pressure over here at P1 is going to be the same as at P2. So let's rewrite that as P1 is equal to P2. We're going to plug in our pressure equation. So we have F1 over A1. It's equal to F2 over A2. And we're solving for A2. So if we do a little bit of algebra, we're going to move this up here, and we're going to cross-multiply that. So we're going to get A2, F2 over F1 times, times A1. So now we're dealing with the ratio of forces instead of the ratio of areas. So the force 2, that's just going to be uh, the weight of Gulliver, uh, so we're going to get the mass of Gulliver times gravity uh, divided by the mass of the Lilliputian times gravity, because uh, force is equal to weight in this case, and weight is equal to mg, if you didn't catch that. Um, and we're going to multiply that by a1. So here we have our g's cancel, that's kind of handy, and we are going to get that a2 is equal to the mass of Gulliver, which we said was 77 kilograms, divided by uh, about 6 kilograms, times our area 1. We said that is going to be 5 centimeters squared. And if we plug that into a handy-dandy calculator, we're going to get an area of 64 centimeters squared. Now what does 64 centimeters squared uh, look like? Well we can uh, run the numbers here. Um, so that means the radius, it's a circle with a radius of about 4.5 centimeters. Um, so just as a little uh, comparison here, um, I've drawn these circles out so the Lilliputian would only have to stand on a circle this big, this is like a top-down view of our hydraulic, and Gulliver would have to stand on a circle this big in order for Gulliver uh, to not move up or down for him to be in equilibrium, for them both to be in equilibrium. So hydraulic presses like these uh, are used uh, in everything from uh, hydraulic brakes, uh, hydraulic brake systems in cars, um, and sometimes even on bikes, um, any, th any construction equipment like backhoes or uh, skid steers, um, even things like car jacks and uh, car hydraulic systems too.